This is a video number four. Uh, this is a short one. It's on factorials, and you might want to wonder what does this have to do with series and sequences, and the answer is absolutely nothing. But we are going to need this next week when we do induction. So uh, let me just write down some facts about factorials, and then we'll look at the calculator, uh, and we'll do some simple problems with factorials. Okay, so by definition, zero factorial is the number one, one factorial is the number one, two factorial is the number two, three factorial is six, four factorial is 24, so something's happening here. Five factorial is found by taking one, multiplying it by two, multiplying it by three, multiplying it by four, and multiplying that by five. And if you work that, that's 120. Five factorial is 120. Uh, I've got my calculator here. Uh, if I want to find five factorial, I hit the number five. Uh, and then under the math menu, math menu, under number, the submenu number, um, um, sub uh, there, all the way over to probability. So it's math, number, uh, CTX, I'm not sure what that is, PRB stands for probability. And you see option four which is the factorial sign. It looks like an exclamation point, and sure enough, that's 120. Let me go back here. Six factorial. Well, let's see. That is five factorial, right? That's five factorial. And then I just have to multiply that times six. So let's expand that out. Just make sure we have one times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5, times 6. And we go to our calculator, that's 720. Uh, if you already have this brought up, you can just do second enter and edit that to 6, and sure enough, 720. Okay, back over here. 7 factorial is going to be 6 factorial, which is all of this, right, times 7. So you can do that here. We have 6 factorial, and let me just multiply that times 7. Okay, so that's 5,040. Uh, if you wanted to enter 7 factorial in exactly, you could do that. Second, math, probability, 7 factorial, 5040. Okay, so these factorials grow very, very quickly, uh, 5040. It's probably one of the fastest growing functions that you're going to encounter in high school. Uh, for example, if I wanted to find 20 factorial, uh, this number is huge. I mean, look, it's 20 factorial, 20 factorial. It's only an approximate value. It's 2.43290200.8, but then it has that E, right? That's standing for scientific notation. So this is about... 2.43290208 times 10 to the 18th. So if I just move the decimal point, I got to move it 18 places. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So 20 factorial, I don't even know how to name this number. Let's see, there's thousands, there's millions, there's billions, there's trillions, there's quadrillions, there's quintillion, two quintillion. It's a huge number. And all that is, that 20 factorial, is simply the numbers 1 times 2 times 3, all the way out to 20. Just multiply those 20 numbers together, and you get this huge, huge number. And in fact, factorials grow so quickly, uh, you can't even do, go to your calculator, if you want to try 70 factorial, 70 factorial, uh, the calculator says, I can't even do that. It overflows the capability of the calculator. Uh, it's just a huge, 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 huge number. Okay, so no good. Uh, 69 factorial you can get away with, and notice that it's got 98 zeros at the tail in there. It's almost a Google, and that's sort of an interesting word. You might want to look up Google not like the website, but like the number, the number Google, which is 10 to the 100th power. Okay, and this is almost there. 
69 factorial is just a tad less than that. Okay, now, that being said, um, I want to do some things with, with factorial. So let's suppose I had 20 factorial divided by uh, 18 factorial. Now, I really don't want to do this on the calculator. So if I try this on the calculator, let's see, 20 factorial, uh, okay, I can do that, divided by 18 factorial, and I can do that, okay, I'm going to get 380. You say, okay, that works fine. Uh, why can't I do that on the calculator? And here's why. Well, I, actually, you can do it on the calculator. Why don't you want to do it on the calculator? Now I want you to take 100 factorial and divide it by 98 factorial. Okay, so both of these problems are very similar. Uh, well, let's see, 100 factorial, wait a minute, I can't even do that, right? That's, that's way beyond what my calculator allows me to do. It, it won't even calculate 70 factorial. Now I'm doing 100 factorial, I'm asking you to divide that by 98 factorial, and um, obviously it says I can't do that. And yet you can do that. You, you can do both of these. In fact, I could do both of these without a calculator. These are not hard problems. So let me go back to this one and see how I might do that. Remember 20 factorials, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, all the way out, 17 times 18 times 19 times 20. That's the way 20 factorial would be defined. And 18 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 17 times 18. Do you see how this works very easily? All of these guys cancel, right? The only thing I have left is 19 times 20. 19 times 20. Okay, 300, what was it, 360? 19 times 20, 380. 380. So even though the calculator can't do this, um, I can do it pretty easily if I just remember 100 factorial. It's 1 times 2 times 3. All the way out, there's 97 times 98 times 99 times 100. That's 100 factorial. Huge, huge, huge number. 98 is almost as large. 98 factorial. 97 times 98. And so they all cancel, all the factors, except for 99 times 100. So this is 9900 there. And so I, I can do that problem, no calculator needed, and in fact, the calculator can't do it for you. Okay, so uh, one last thing I want to do with factorials is what happens if you had something like um, n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial. And you go, cheesy peasy, there's no even numbers there. How do I do that? Well, n factorial would be 1 times 2 times 3. You keep going all the way out. To n. That's n factorial. And n plus 1 factorial would be 1 times 2 times 3 all the way out to n plus 1. Now, question. n represents some natural number. n could be 10. n plus 1 is the one that comes after it. So if you think of a list, here's a natural number. The one that comes after that would be n plus 1. The one that comes after that would be n plus 2. The one that comes before n would be n minus 1. Right, so you could just sort of imagine if this were 10, this would be 10 plus 1, this would be 10 plus 2, and so forth, right? So in my setup up here, n plus 1 factorial, 1 times 2 times 3, all the way out to n plus 1, what comes before n plus 1, that would be n. Aha, so even though there's no numbers, these do cancel all the way out, and I'm left with 1 on top and n plus 1 on the bottom. So yeah, this does simplify. It's 1 over n plus 1. Okay, so I've got a uh, uh, homework sheet number 2, and we're going to work that uh, on Thursday. So watch these two videos. Watch them again if you like. And then if you want to preview the homework sheets, you can. We'll be doing those on Thursday. Happy factoring.